Mora conducts physician-led support groups, helping people live healthier, happier lives, free from chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. And on our podcast, Health and Mora with Dr. Lori Marbus, we bring to you nutrition and lifestyle medicine experts and extraordinary guests to empower and inspire you with their knowledge and stories of plant-based lifestyle so that you can be your healthiest self. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marvis, and I'm super excited to welcome back a dear friend, John Corey. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you, Lori. Uh, well, John and uh, boy, we've known each other for a while now. We've had a lot of fun and awesome conversations, and it's, it's so awesome to connect again. And um, you got a lot going on, but I just want to explain to people who you are. You're a former producer of Forks Over Nice, but tell me a little bit about that. Like, what is a producer? And we'll get into like, all the good stuff that you're doing now? Producers come in all shapes and sizes. They tend to do a variety of things, but it boils down to typically the producer is somebody who gets the idea or is given the idea or funds the idea and then sees it from idea to consent, you know, all the way to, you know, you know, so to where it's actually, oh, wow. Yeah, and so it, it's either the raising the money or hiring the crew. Uh, oh. Typically the producer hires the director and the director hires the crew and, and so ultimately the producer is the one that delivers, they actually produce. So, you know, they're aptly named. A director directs a producer produces. Gotcha. And I got my start, I went to Florida State, I studied communications, I went into the Air Force and I was in combat camera, left awesome. as a captain and I uh, got into commercial TV in, uh, in uh, 1990. Wow. So like, like you, I served in the Air Force and uh, yep. got my start there, but in combat camera is a great start. I mean, what a cool way to, I guess it depends on how much combat you're seeing, what you're actually doing, but it, it's it's cool to be able to do what you love inside the military. I mean, I just, I think that's so cool. Yeah, yeah it was a great way, a great way to sort of cut your teeth in your 20s. And and it was also, we were shooting 16 millimeter film back then, which was wow. very, very rare and editing on the, literally editing the clip, the film clips, the way they did it in the old days. Then we switched to Avid and then we have sort of seen that whole transition from film celluloid to digital and wow nonlinear editing and all that wow that is very cool i mean yeah i just you know because you see on the old movies all the like clippings of film on the floor and people editing it's just so very different these days yeah oh, goodness oh. Mm -hmm. um cool and so that a little bit of big there so can we start with a little bit about your background with as far as like how did the forks over knives documentary come out or the the I don't know you call it a movie or a documentary. What is the genre? It's a, feature, nice. a feature length documentary. Feature length documentary. There you go. Um, make sure I get my vernacular correct. And then as far as like, how did that start? Because I feel like that's the one that people are going to be most uh, familiar with. Like, how does that idea come about? And how do you even begin to even put that together? Yeah. And I don't want to go over too much ground because I think we covered some of this in the first interview. Yep, yep, yep. I don't want to rehash it. But basically, Brian Wendell was was caught up with the uh, the notion that this is a great message. He had been to, he had read some books. He had been to some health seminars. And through a mutual friend, it, I was introduced. He was looking, he was exploring the idea of a documentary. And I wasn't, I didn't know much about the plant-based diet, but mm. he talked me into reading um, uh the uh, Dr. Campbell's book. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let me wait. Let me say that over again. He talked. He talked. The China, me in the reading. He talked me in the China reading. The, the China study. Yeah. I just happened to have it right here. I was looking for it, and um, I, I he reached out to me like the next week. How? What do you think? Have you read it? And I remember at, at one point I, I didn't know whether it 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 would translate into a, a documentary, and then we started getting into some of the China stuff, and I had been to China. Uh, I'd done several projects in China a few years prior, and I started seeing how we could kind of tie this all together. And by the time I had wrapped it up, I called them up and I said, there's there's a film here. And then, you know, that led to uh, me bringing on Lee Fulkerson, who was my showrunner for a series called The Color of War. It was eight, 17 hours of uh, uh, about World War II in all color, which was kind of rare back in those days. Wow. And uh, and so Lee Fulkerson, I knew he was uh, somebody that could handle the intellectual lift of a project such as this. And so I hired, uh, like I said, uh, as a producer, I hired uh, Lee. I, I kind of actually, I kind of did the directing and Lee did most of the writing. Mm. So but we gave Lee the director credit because Lee uh, typically, he, he, 
he was the one who sort of spoke for the film. And once we decided that it would be good to have Lee go through the film and do his own health journey, yeah, how sick he was until I just happened to be filming some behind the scenes footage of him going to the doctor. He, we wanted him to go through the process of what it's like as a patient to right. see, uh, yeah, to see a plant based doctor. So anyway, once we decided that that we should maybe he could tell the story, uh, we we gave he, he had the director credit, but by and large, I directed most of most of the scenes with Lee and did a lot of the a uh, lot of the side segments. So now this is also just a caveat to yourself. You actually went plant-based as well after this right with you yeah 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 all of in fact all of the crew started leaning into a plant-based <laughs> diet uh, and and <laughs> first out of respect for the doctors we were visiting and when they were they were serving us and then we'd meet in restaurants and then slowly more and more of us just be, started going that way I, I i came home and told my wife patty about it and she's like i got two kids in high school you know this is a lot i got a lot on my plate right now not not yet not yet so <laughs> it was more gradual and i understand it's such a big thing but right. um, yeah now i mean patty she, patty got on board really quickly and yeah. interestingly enough her mom uh bev yes. kelly she and you've met bev. yes i love her so she, much two years old you know uh she, when she was 80 she heard about it because she asked me what, what are you doing and i told her about the diet in the film and two months later uh she said hey by the way I, I i after you told me about the diet i looked it up and i've been doing it i said what yeah and so a firecracker. Her, her line was I, I thought i was getting old i didn't know i had another gear so at 80 you know she starts doing it and all of a sudden you know, you know we started we, we started doing all this travel we took a lot of big family trips and oh, wow. and uh she was able to keep up with her grandkids in fact they they couldn't keep up with her they, you know we went to Greece just last fall we went to uh I mean last uh, last March we went to wow. uh, uh Spain in 2019 with the grandkids went to Italy wow. went to Africa and wow. yeah yeah so she's an example of somebody that that uh sort of embraced the idea and um and was able to make the most of it and 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 she's just a great ambassador for, you know, it's never too late. Yeah. And, you know, and the, the remarkable thing about her, I just, she's just adorable. My goodness. And she's also very social and going out and doing things. Cause I know when I was there and met her, she was like, I think going out to some of the senior centers, she was, I'm going to go talk to the folks at the senior center. <laughs> and she's in her eighties. Yeah. And there's like, I don't know, was it there's something else she was doing? Is the dancing or something? There's some other things that she likes to do. I can't Exercise recall. class. She, yeah. went, she she helps out of the food pantry every Thursday. Wow. Uh, I just finished a film called Revelations Cafe. And we we did a we did a profile of Bev and put it in there. And I, I always wanted to do that. We were able to include pictures of her uh, during the pandemic when there was a car parade and haunt, there was a big sign that said honk for Bev you know when you come by happy birthday bev honk and Aww. cars were going by and all these people showed up to show their love and support oh that's so, fantastic we just happened to film that just for posterity and then next thing you know we we're able to put that into the into the film so awesome yeah. well let's yeah. dive that's a great you know segue to what you're doing now so you know tell us a little bit about the revelation cafe and then we'll get into your work with plant pure um yeah, well, you know, Revelations Cafe came about when uh, in 2019, I had, um, I just happened to see a notice on Facebook, a friend I knew from high school uh, mentioned he was opening up a plant based restaurant in Tampa. And I was like, Robbie, really? That's crazy. So I and he's somebody I just hadn't talked to. We we're I guess we we're friends on Facebook. But if you're friends with a lot of people on Facebook, you don't talk to. And I hadn't seen him at any of the reunions. So I literally hadn't talked to the guy in more than 35 years. Wow. And uh, but I, I, I direct messaged him. We got on a phone call and he told me all about it. And his, he told me about his story. And I just couldn't believe it. Uh, you know, seven years prior, he was homeless. He had he had blown his back out. He got divorced decided to get back into bodybuilding because Robbie was the most disciplined bodybuilder back when I knew him in the, in the late eighties, you know, and uh, he decided to get back into competitive bodybuilding in his early forties and he blew his back out and he went to the doctor. And of course they put him on a opioid based pain regimen. And at one point they were prescribing him six pills a day, 180 pills a month prescribed a real high dose 
of, uh, of opioid base. And he became addicted uh, so much so that uh, he lost his, uh, he started selling his possessions. Wow. He, uh, he couldn't make the payments on his house, lost his job. And this is Robbie, who's a criminology major, Mr. Discipline. Wow. So I just, I just couldn't believe his story. And he ended up going to the Salvation Army and, um, and found his faith. And at the same time, also met his wife, who was, you know, and, you know, that's looking for, a, you know, she, she found him at an AA meeting when he was homeless. He was living at the Salvation Army. It's not the, you wouldn't think it's the best place to go meet people. <laughs> but they were both wearing the same bracelet. It's just this amazing story. Her yes. name is uh, Mia Ravello. And so she's now Mia Ravello Graham. They got married and they've just got this great story. And, and as it goes, she had had this idea to do a, a restaurant. It's the worst idea in the world. <laughs> worst idea in the world, but she got it. Let's, let, let, let's get this straight. She <laughs> wants to open a restaurant. She has no experience running a restaurant. She wants it to be faith-based, plant-based, no alcohol, no wine. Um, you know, there's going to be a prayer room in it. And she just had this big vision for what could possibly be the worst idea in the world with no experience. And then to make it even worse, they picked a location that was a, a, a mattress store that used to be a blockbuster, no kitchen. They had to start from scratch and they did it. They did it. And she, she brought the idea to her ex-husband who said, this is great. Let's do it. <laughs> so, to her ex-husband too. Yeah. yeah so a faith-based plant-based cafe, re interesting story. And so I ended up going up by, and meeting Robbie and Mia um, two weeks before it opened, and I walked into this place. It's in Tampa, Florida, and Lutz uh, uh, specifically. And I, I, I looked around. I just couldn't believe it looked like a franchise. It was so well thought out. And I looked at the menu, and I, I just couldn't. I just couldn't uh, uh, imagine that all this this had come together. In the meanwhile, Robbie. Um, Robbie had seen Forks Over Knives and Plant Pure Nation. He was excited about all of that. And, and actually, as the story goes, he was on board with the restaurant, the plant-based cafe. He was on board with that, but he wasn't on board with the plant-based diet. He still was mm -hmm. clinging to some of this, these, these male uh, you know, myths that you have to eat meat to get big and strong and and for protein, for bodybuilding and all of that. So he was on board with helping her, but he wasn't on board with the diet. Well, mm -hmm. you know, two months before I met him, before I saw him, or three months actually, he, he had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And um, in recovery, one of his friends gives him, I don't know if I'm Dr. Esselstyn's book right here, but he gives him, you know, how to re prevent and reverse heart disease by Dr. Esselstyn. Right. And Bobby starts reading it and realizes, I got to get on board with this get on board with this message and so i saw him when he was in recovery from his heart attack and he full, wholeheartedly has been plant-based ever since wow. and uh, i and i just and then he said they were thinking about writing a book and and then the the, the restaurant took off and the first year was great they, they were just it was doing great and mia you know she, she she's one to have premonitions and one was that she was hoping she could do some kind of reboot of the restaurant maybe maybe uh take it into another direction and as it turns out, you know, in March of uh, 2020, the pandemic hit, they had to close the restaurant down. And that was a good chance for them to literally think about, okay, what do we want to be? Mm. What, what are we all about? You know, mm. and they, the first thing they thought was we need to, we, let's make our food even better. Let's, uh, let's, let's reach out to those people that do plant pure communities. Let's start a pod here. Mm. You know? and then we can be more than just a restaurant. We want to be a, a place where the community can reach out to. Yes. And then the third thing was, um, uh, Martin owns an independent physicians association. And so uh, he has a lot of doctors in his business and they, they basically take Medicare patients off the hands of the government and, and the government gives them to Martin 15,000, maybe if it's more now, but 15,000 patients and they're all his. And he's the Martin's he's uh, me as ex-husband. And, uh, and so he's in charge of those lives. And so he's very, if, if uh, you know, the only way he can, he can stay afloat is if, they don't all get sick and so he's very interested in, in this message and then the fourth thing they wanted to do they called me up and said hey we're interested in doing a, a documentary and i'm here in california where it's completely shut down you it was almost like martial law you can only leave, leave the house for you know two or three reasons like food and gas and uh, and doctor visits yes. and i'm thinking hmm, i can go to florida and maybe help these guys make their film and so i did and uh, so during the pandemic, we made the, uh, we were able to tell their story. And it was, it was one of those stories that the more you dig, 
the more you realize there's there's something really interesting going on here. And a lot of it was the lessons we learned from the pandemic. Mm. And that there's so many people that were, uh, uh, you know, you're dying. We're dying of chronic conditions, yep. mostly reversible through diet. Right. You know, so anyway, wow. we weave this all into a story and we uh, it's uh, it's going to have a uh, yeah, and, and and thank you, because I remember when I thought we had it pretty much close to a rough cut. I sent you a rough cut and you gave me the notes and I took them to heart and we went back to the drawing board, made a few more changes. And so I'm really, really happy where we ended up. And so wow. it's a film about it's about, you know, being healthy, but in the in, not just in the body, but in your mind. It, in your spirit as well. I don't mm. we don't overly preach in the film. I didn't want to do that, but I wanted it's a platform where, where Robbie and Mia can share their story. And uh and the restaurant, they were able to reopen it, relaunch it, and we filmed that as well. And so yeah, uh, it's up and running. We're we're gonna have our, our summit on uh, January 7th and 8th of uh, next year when people are thinking about a new year, a new you. And we've got a lot of uh people uh that are that are gonna be on board with the summit. It's almost it's a who's who, and I don't want to don't want to give away all the names yet. But uh, Dr. Lori Marvis happens to be one of them. <laughs> yep, I'll be there. I can't so, wait. Um, yeah, and so we, we we I reached out to a lot of people who who their faith is just as important as their diet. Hmm. And there's a lot of people in the plant based world, so it's a different angle on, yeah. on our diet. But uh, at, in the end, uh, all of us want to be healthy in body, mind, and spirit. So, hundred percent. Forward to sharing that. Wonderful. In um. Yeah, if there's any links or something that people can pre-register for the summit or anything, please send those along. We'll make sure they're in a in the show notes. Yeah, and the place to go is a uh, uh, revelationscafefilm.com. Okay. And they can sign up for the email. We'll let everybody know at that point. We're just putting all the promotion, all the materials together now. Gotcha. Relations film, revelationscafefilm.com. Got it. Perfect. Cool. So that's one awesome project. And so tell us a little bit about your first, the plant pure nation one, and now you've got something, another new project that I was fortunate enough to be a part of, but let's, let's talk about how did, how did that all come to fruition the first time? Well, uh, Nelson Cam, Dr. Campbell's son, Nelson was uh, putting together a film. He wanted to see what it would be like if he could get a bunch of people in a small town in, in Mebbin, North Carolina, and people that are, it's barbecue country up there. And he thought, well, what if, what could we do in 10 days? How could we show these people that you can really make an adjustment, live a happier, healthier life? And and uh, so we started shooting this film. And, uh, and then he asked me to come on board and help him produce it. He was doing it with Lee Fulkerson as well, who helped with a lot of the writing and, and uh, the directing. And um, so that film came out in 2015. Wow, it's been seven years already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just like Forks Over Knives was a was a really good film. It helped kind of you know establish the a brand, the food mm -hmm. brand. It's a it's a magazine, cooking courses, you know, apps and cut shopping apps and everything. Well, you know, that that I think Forks Over Knives showed a lot of people that there's a power, there's a power in film. And mm -hmm. it really helped move the needle. And Plant Pure Nation was in a way answered the question a lot of people had after they watched forks over knives or after they read the china study and that's it you know why why haven't i heard about this so mm -hmm. nelson wanted to answer that question and we did a, we did a lot of uh kind of went undercover and showed people how convoluted the state legislature uh, can be and how hard it is to get people just to agree on something very simple that right. eating more fruits and vegetables a, a diet primarily in fruits and vegetables not exclusively but just primarily was healthy for you it was it was unbelievable what 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 happened. So we documented all that, and and in the end of the film, Nelson says uh, basically, don't look to government to make changes. We, if you want changes to happen, it really has to start with us, and it has to be grassroots. Join us. Let's start pods. Let's create. Let's 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 start a community pods everywhere. Next thing you know, uh, by making that part of the film, he was able to launch Plant Pure Communities, a nonprofit, and uh, on the Plant Pure side, he was able to create a frozen food line. So if you go to public stores now, you can eat the breakfast burritos and the nonprofit is uh, uh, set up hundreds and hundreds of pods all over the country where people meet once a month. If you're not, you can start a pod or you can join a pod. It's really pretty much uh, volunteer based. And a lot of people love the fellowship and the community of meeting up once a month, 
It's usually a potluck. So you're sharing food, you're sharing recipes, you're sharing uh, books. Maybe there's a speaker or you share, somebody shares a video or a movie, what, what have you. And, it, and it's really exciting. They had mm -hmm. over 200,000 people when they did an audit of all of the, uh, the pods around the country. Really exciting stuff. Wow. And, but you know, in March, 2020, that, that whole model stopped. These people couldn't keep meeting together again. So it really put the, it really slowed down the, uh, the uh, sort of that, the community part of it. And now they're coming back and they're coming yeah. back as, as they did once before. But uh, that again, that would, that just showed that, that, uh, you know, a, a film uh, done, done, it, it, film does have the power to persuade and right. books do as well. And magazine articles and internet sites and influencers, they they do as well. But there's something about when people go into a, a big room and they turn off the lights or they're on their TV or looking on their screen, um, they 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 tend to be open to what you're what you're saying. Right. And I don't, you know, it used to be uh, a lot of documentarians used to feel like you had to always show the other side of every argument hmm. to make it fair and balanced, you know. Hmm. And did you, you know, did you give the opposing side a a chance to talk but the way i see it with these plant-based films they're so important because mm. you never hear about the other you never hear this side right you, know, so you want to devote all the time you can uh, we we did in forks over knives uh, uh, have some other people on that argued where you know they're sort of the other side of it but if you look at how how our kids are being bombarded bar bombarded with messaging just drive down any main main street and you look at the choices and what what's out there it really is a minefield and so mm. It's 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 kind of nice to, uh, to be involved in, in films that that can kind of just share the science, share the stories, and if you can and, and emotional stories sometimes, uh, if you get to somebody in their heart, you can change their head, but mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I think uh, uh, Forks Over Knives was so popular because once we got a chance to have people listen, we just stayed with the science, mm -hmm. and that was a convincing argument. And in Nelson's mm -hmm. film, we, we we you literally see people shutting him down at every turn, you know. And yeah. uh, because there's a lot of people are really happy with the status quo, you know, yeah. big pharma, big medicine, yeah. big food, big ag, everybody's yeah. in on the money grab. Uh, I mean, there's so many people making money off unhealthy people. Right. Yeah. Right. So they, they are pushing the, the suffering and, you know, just speaking of suffering so much, you know, we, it's just, it's so unnecessary and so easy to make better choices and see people get well. And I feel that's where I, the educational piece, but you guys pull emotional strings and you're telling a story and that's how humans are. We're wired to listen to stories and feel the emotion and get, you know, caught up in it. And you do, you start thinking differently. You know, I come out of watching those adventure movies thinking like, I'm ready to take on the bad guys, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, all those fun things but yeah it's, it's i i will tell you forks over nine has played such a instrumental part in in my life and others too that um it's just it's a fun thing and then to see nelson and then get to know nelson and kim personally i got they invited me to partake in filming for the plant for you know uh plant pure nation two um and that was quite a cool experience so i'll let you share what's coming up and as much because I know there's still some stuff under wraps, but what would you like us to know about that project? I, I, and I would love to take credit for the idea, which was so clever. Um, uh, I, I was involved in the sort of the early outlines of it. And then as, uh, as the filming uh, came together in the edit, editing room, uh, I, I, I was asked my opinion and uh, helped shape some of the story. Um, but basically the premise is it's really hard to prove out the plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can really prove it out is if you have captive people <laughs> okay. who are captive people. Maybe if you're in prison, uh, maybe if you're in a hospital bed, or maybe if you're in a, like assisted living or something then you're kind of a captive, right. but, uh, but, um, uh, it's kind of hard to pull that off. But what, <laughs> what Nelson was thinking was, what if we got, what if we could do sort of a, it really wasn't. Uh, it, it was. It was a program to demonstrate the healing power of the okay. diet. Yeah, it was just an example. It wasn't an experiment or anything like that. It was just. A, it was just a. Let, let's prove it out. What if we took, you know, six people, and uh, and put them in a home all together? Had Dr. Lori Marvis treat them as a patient, as their patients, 
and then have Kim Campbell uh, and uh, Chef Fernando as well, serve mm -hmm. them the super healthy food for 10 days, what might happen? Mm -hmm. And so they put out a call and they got six people and two of them uh, brought along their spouses. So you had eight people all together mm -hmm. participating yep. in this uh, really cool thing, a big Airbnb house. Yep, you know, in North Carolina. In, in Greensboro, <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, uh, and then why don't you tell us what happened? You know, it was a remarkable thing to see people like it's the normal story. You see people improve their health, their mental capacity improves, the brain fog, they're dropping insulin, they're dropping weight, they're feeling more energy, less pain, you know, all the things, but you're literally living it. And I'll tell you, it's, it's fun too. <laughs> I've never had anyone film me you know, from walking out of the bedroom door to the time you go to bed, <laughs> you know, so you walk out, it's like game face, you're like ready. <laughs> so yeah. any conversation can be filmed, anything. So that was a unique experience. It was a lot of fun. And I mean, you got Kim Campbell and, and Chef Fernando like cooking for you. I'm like, I'm not leaving. Y'all just going to stay or <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it was pretty fun. It was and such a joy, such wonderful side conversations. And um, you know, beyond the physical is just, it was just a wonderful experience and, you know, speaking to Nelson and getting to see them every day. And it was just a real joy to be a part of it. Honestly, it was just, uh, just a joy. Yeah. yeah. And Mar Marco Jakubowicz. Yes. Brian mm -hmm. Olson were the primary crew. They, they did yep. camera and also the editing. Yes. And yes. I've worked with Marco on Tattoo Nation. He was the editor on Plant Pure Nation, an amazing storyteller. I've worked with Brian. We've been yep. to the Dominican Republic and shooting all around. And he's an amazing editor and storyteller as well. So yep. Nelson was in good hands. But at the time, though, this really was was going to be may, maybe a, a segment in a right. larger story. Right. And uh, and then, then and then they ended up cutting it longer. And they showed it to me last year and they said, what do you think? And I was like, well, it's, it's a 47 minutes. It's a very interesting, very interesting story. But I really want to know what happened to these people after they left the house, when right. they go back into the real world, because you know, just give us this. I mean, the results were so stunning. Right, right. You're seeing significant drops in cholesterol and diet and, you know, people who are on insulin, stopping insulin or coming near off of insulin. Um, yeah, those type of results were remarkable, but you're exactly right. And that's kind of where we're sitting on with Mora, you know, that we're doing the more medical stuff is literally about the sustainability. We get people in a group and we're sustaining. It's it's a very similar idea. We're just virtual, but yeah, what happens afterwards? Because like you had said before, when we talked about it, you learn more from those who struggled than those who didn't, right? Right, right. So yeah, so when you have somebody that's captive and you're feeding them basically 21 meals in a row. Right. I uh, know that's only seven days. 30, 30 years. Meals. Yeah. Excuse yeah. Me. yeah. So 30, what, what happens? What happens right. when they come back and they have to have meal one? post, you know, captive situation. Right. So it, it went, they went from reality house to the reality. Right. You know? And uh, right. so, so they, they, uh, they thought about it. They raised, they uh, were able to raise the additional production funds to go back and do that road trip. And yes. now they got themselves a really good film. And then the, the backdrop of the film is about the, the pandemic as well. And yeah. something we addressed in plant in a revelations cafe uh, this this notion of uh, what did the government do when they had a chance to really they with you know, every, they had our attention the government right. had our attention what can we do to be healthy right and during the pandemic Nelson went to the CDC website and was surprised at what he didn't see right. and what he didn't hear so it, right. that story is told as well of course Dr Campbell uh, is is uh, on board as well in this film to sort of yeah. share what his side of things and so. It's, yeah. a, it's a really cool film. It's called Plant Pure Nation 2. It's going to come out next year. Just uh, we'll start to, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll give more detail, I guess. Uh, as we uh, move out. Yeah. Yeah. As we figure it out. But uh, yeah, 2023, it's going to be exciting. And the idea too, uh, it's really exciting because we're hoping that it'll help re-energize those pods after mm. the pandemic. Right, right. Yeah. Which is an important piece, right? Because I truly believe the community aspect, I mean, people get the food, you can make it taste good. Yes, there's some things you need to learn and do, but that community piece is so important for sustainability. Because if you have friends who are eating this way and family members, it's much easier to make those decisions. 
Exactly right. And that kind of proves the point when they went out to get, to see what these, these six people were doing six months later, mm-hmm. it's interesting to see. And uh, I don't want to give any, any of that away, but, but right. you, you learn, you learn from people that are, are struggling just as much as you do from people that, that kind of got it. Cause we can, yeah. we can relate to that. And so uh, the idea is that we're hoping this, this film will help it expand and re-energize the pod network because they provide that piece, that community okay. piece. Yes. You know, and some of these people, they went back to Iowa or in, in different locations around the country, and they were kind of back in the back when the standard American diet land. Right. And so uh, it's not it's not easy. Yeah. You know, I really feel like, you know, and I love behavior change and diving deep into all that, you know, because we're working with uh, corporations now. We have others that are just patients. And it's just it's just really fascinating to me just to hear from different parts of the country. People are are really struggling with that that piece of sticking with it. But just knowing that that behavior change, like I said, we want to work with people who are working together or living together because that's where you're going to see the changes take hold. But where do you feel like the greatest lessons of all of these, you know, all these people and your experience over the last decade plus years of doing plant-based work, but also just your production. Are there any like nuggets that you've seen that, because you're filming and listening and you're like the fly on the wall, right? When you're mm-hmm. seeing things and you get in the editing room and you're seeing what's not being, what are some of the the overarching lessons that you've seen really helpful for people to listen or learn in either being successful or yeah, you know, getting you know, I think the plant-based diet, just those three words, plant-based diet, it, it's so many things all at once. Mm. It's the most simple thing in the world. It's the most, it's the hardest thing in the world. <laughs> it, 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 it's the most, uh, it's the most soothing, uh, reaffirming, concept that i've ever heard about in my life yet it's the most dangerous concept Mm -hmm. all at the same time why is it the most dangerous oh if you're in one of those other businesses that are making a living off junk food fast food crappy food yeah making a living doing that uh if you're making a living and and uh, you know getting people on uh getting people to to accept the idea that if they just take a pill a day for the rest of their life that will that will that will solve the problem. It doesn't solve the problem. Right. So exactly. it, it, it's so many things at once. It's uh, I, I, I'm shocked at 60 minutes and I would challenge the people at 60 minutes to consider the topic of the plant-based diet for a story. I would just mm. love to see, and I always wonder why they haven't. It's right, right out there for everybody to see. And when you see stories of healing, oh, it's just, just, just amazing. So to be, <laughs> to, be a little, to be a part of that, and I have a lot of friends that are doctors out here in LA. And I was yeah. teasing one of them once. I said, you know what? I may, I may have had a hand in, in helping uh, at least as many people as you have. <laughs> sure, not not more. <laughs> and I, I'm just, pass, just passing on the information. I mean, Brian Wendell had the idea to make a documentary, but it, was, it wasn't his information. He was right. able to share Dr. Campbell, Dr. Esselstyn, and some of these other, other great doctors. And um, right. but, uh, it, that's it. So it's information. It's, a, it's, it's sort of a hearing it and applying it. And I guess... Overall, it's surprising to me. I think the thing that's most surprising to me is is when people realize that, oh yeah, I guess I guess I'm in charge of my health. I can be I can be 100 percent really. There's a lot of people kind of think my doctor's in charge of my health and I'm just me. Mm-hmm. It's like you, you know, you, you only have three homes. You have your body, mm-hmm. you know, you have the planet Earth, you've got a home you live in, and then you've got your body. Those are your, those are our three homes, mm-hmm. you know, and the the. <laughs> you know, you're so many people just have this disconnect and they're living in the most unhealthy home. Mm-hmm. And yet, yet they probably live in a beautiful house right. and have a beautiful yard, but right. their bodies. And, uh, it's just amazing. I've got a, I've got a really good friend, uh, one of my best friends, we were in each other's weddings and, and, uh, he just had a major stroke a week ago and mm-hmm. he's in hospice care right now. Oh, I'm sorry. And it's just, it's just really hard for, you know, for me to accept but right. 61 is way too early for a stroke. So heart mm-hmm. disease, so many people don't realize they have heart disease until they have a heart attack or they have a stroke. It's just mm-hmm. not, you know, so I, when, when people, uh, when, when people get, take control of their own health, that to me is, that's the exciting thing. And that's, and, and yes, yes, it's, it's, it's simple in that it's a choice you make, 
And that's the hardest thing is that, but the, the choice itself is simple. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start eating for me, for my man, for my body. And uh, when people do that and the, the, the light bulb goes off, uh, just like my mother-in-law, uh, you're just really happy. Just mm -hmm. makes you really happy. And you're like, and then you start to see the world a completely different way and you realize, you know, it's like tiptoeing through a minefield, just going to the mall or go <laughs> driving down the street, you know. But you know, once you fortify yourself and you're 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 you, and then you go to these places and you order the side menu, you order off the side menu if you have to, but there's there's ways to navigate through life, you know. Yeah, there, you know, a great example is yesterday. Uh we had lunch with um my one of my co-founders, Murthy, who's our CEO, and um, uh, a new friend that is recent, new to the his traveling. But anyway, we were all plant based, and we went to a Mexican restaurant, and they had a few different things. But you know, as simple as chips, you think, oh, well, the chips, well, they're fried. Number one, it's not the best, but if you find whatever, but they're you know fried in lard, right? So. Like you say, you're literally tiptoeing through the minefield, but once you explain it to the waiter, waitress, they're most often very, very accommodating and open to your suggestions and questions. Because like she brought out our salad and it had ranch dressing. I'm like, well, this is not exactly plant-based. Can you have any vinaigrette? So she brought out an Italian dressing. I'm like, at a Mexican restaurant, it works, whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and then we had grilled vegetables and beans and some tortillas. It was great. Um, but uh, yeah, you just have to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. So what do you eat in a day? Because I do get that question a lot, by the way. Uh, oatmeal is my go-to in the morning. Okay. I've, I, I, and I hate oatmeal. But I, I've, learned, I, I've learned that I don't like it because it's hot and it's kind of bland. But if I throw in frozen fruit, the frozen mm. fruit melts and then it cools off the oatmeal and I've got something quick. So that's, that's kind of my go-to. Nice. And, um, yeah, we just have a lot of stews and... A lot of lentils, lentil-based stews and bean, yeah. bean-based stews. Yeah. Patty's, Patty's become a really good cook. We we do a lot of the recipes from the Forks Over Knives cookbook. Nice. And also from the uh, Plant Pure Nation cookbook. Yes. In fact, Kim's yes. got, a, got a new one coming out called Comfort Food. Yes. And it's coming out for Christmas, so... Yes. Yeah, oh. Asian comfort food. So food. You know, and the beautiful thing about Kim Campbell is when she makes food, she literally puts all of her love into that food. I mean, like, I don't care what I'd eat from Kim. It would, you would just radiate love because goodness gracious, she's just a sweetheart. And I just, and Nelson too, they're just such amazing human beings that just love being with them for those 10 days i'll tell you it was such a joy <laughs> i can't even tell you but yes um the food is delicious um and she makes it easy that was fun too is you know when we were filming is you know people getting people in the kitchen and teaching some skills and surprising them and having people try new foods like tofu it's it's <laughs> right and when you get out of your comfort zone you realize how much comfort there is and how much variety there is in the oh. in the new zone it nice. isn't that uncomfortable. In fact, a lot of people are sort of, they start with the big meat something and then right. everything else is an afterthought. And then once, but once you start making your primary food plant-based, now you've got literally hundreds of options you didn't, might not have thought about before. Yeah, Flavor thousands. Seasonings. Oh. Yes, and, yes. And even, you know, I've done a lot of production in Florida these last, I've just done a lot, a number of Florida productions, just as it turned out, I'm, I live in LA. But uh, left Florida back in in, uh, in uh, twenty in eighteen. I mean nineteen eighty five. But uh, the last five years, I did a lot of production in Florida. So I would live with my mother in law, who is cooking plant based from scratch, lunch and dinner. I was like eating like a king. And so I've had most of the forks over knives recipes, uh, most of the plant pure uh, recipes from Kim, and they're fantastic. And um, so she's got these books all lined up, and they're dog eared by now. <laughs> all the highlight you know stickers all over them but yes I've, I've been able because of that i've just been very fortunate you know mm. oh yeah absolutely yeah and again you know it's just it's just one bite at a time and just thinking that this is food to fuel your body and it can taste delicious and um and the days and the times that you're not eating this is these are the things you should be thinking about not what's right in front of you at the moment what does this mean tomorrow the next day next week next year because that's what you're investing in is your health long-term, like your friends, right? And we can hopefully avoid something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And food prep is so, is so key to yeah. just wait when you're shopping and on yeah. Sundays kind of thinking about where you're going. 
Yeah, I made a chia pudding, but if for cold, maybe you should do overnight oats or a chia pudding. Like I put uh, two tablespoons of chia seeds in a half a cup of soy milk. And then I added blueberries and some bananas and put it in the fridge overnight and ate it this morning. It was delicious. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's lots of good stuff. Yeah, so Yonana is a great frozen food. Yes. Yes, it's yes, the banana nice. ice cream. Sweet tea, yeah. Yeah, for Patrick, yes, you got to, yeah. as you, <laughs> it's just something else, that one, but excellent. Well, John, is there any other final advice you'd like to share with us? Because I really do appreciate your time. I just, uh, I just, uh, I just encourage people to uh, make up their own mind. And for mm -hmm. some people, for some people, they don't have the time to sit down and, and, and you know, crack a book like this. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. this, this is not but it's easy reading, but it takes a long time. Right. And so for a lot of people watching a film or a documentary, is more, it's more of a lean back experience. Mm -hmm. Reading a book is a lean forward. A lot mm -hmm. of people want to just lean back. Okay, I'll listen, but I think, uh, I, I think that that's, there's a place for that. Like The Game Changers was a great film. Yes. You know, what the Health is a great film. So it's yes. just nice when, the, the, when titles like that come out, um, they kind of help... Uh, reinvigorate people or yes. they, they become a vehicle that you can share you can't read a book along with somebody else but you can share a film yes you, yes. you get and everybody now has youtube on their on their smart tvs so right. it's really easy to get to pull these films up and plant pure nation we it was on netflix for two years wow and um when when the license expired we put it on we put it right on youtube for free right and boy did that help uh that helped the viewership and help, oh, okay. help create the awareness. Netflix as well, but, nice. um, but by, by setting it uh, free, it's, it's just out there. So I'm Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed that video. Before you go though, please hit the subscribe and alert buttons so you don't miss out on any of the amazing content we're working so hard to provide you. We upload a new episode of Health & Mora with Dr. Lori Marbus every Friday. Now, if you'd rather listen to the podcast, you can find us on all the major platforms such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and even Spotify. If you're looking for amazing resources to help you start and sustain a plant-based diet, exercise, recipes, or anything wellness, we got you covered there too. Because at Mora, we actually provide physician-led support groups to help people live happier, healthier lives free of metabolic disease. Don't forget to check out our website at mora.com and thanks again for watching.